was first discovered on Earth. Some say we can never win against it. Some say we've already lost. And some call it by a name. Heavy Metal 2000. There's a new warrior in the galaxy. Don't talk, don't touch, don't even breathe. She's armed to the teeth. Who's gonna pay for all this? And she'll take you down, big time. You shouldn't have done that. It's not for the timid. It's not for the meek. And it's definitely not for your parents. Over 200 dirty words. You're not from our world. No way. This is Heavy Metal 2000, and it kicks ass. Featuring stellar music from the most lethal names in heavy metal. It'll push you to the limit and drive you to madness. The insanity has to end. Heavy Metal 2000 rocks on video and DVD. Why didn't you tell me that before? It'll suck your mind dry. <laughs> you fools! What's up, everybody? It's Phil, and uh, we're back. It's uh, the afternoon here in Chicago, 12 ton. It is the 14th of April, and it is... Wednesday. I have my day off today, which is weird, but uh, we're going out of town this weekend, going to a convention. It's a video game convention, but uh, I think I'm still going to bring some some comics here. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We're doing kind of like this weird retrospective thing that uh, I wanted to do because uh, I just got the new Simon Bisley sketchbook, which was on Kickstarter. Crowdfunded it um, a few months ago. Turnaround time was really good, and uh, it's really, really cool. I wanted to go through that with some awesome artists, so sent out the invite. Of course, you guys know Art's going to be here. Uh, Kelsey's supposed to be here. We're waiting on him. Um, he's stuck in the swamp or something. And, uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's bring the man himself in here. Well, let's let's say hi to uh, the people in the chat. we got Christopher John. What's up, brother? Thanks for tuning in. William C. as well. Uh, El Gargoyle. He didn't drop the eggplant, but here, here, here he is. Uh, uh, Red Boar Comics and Games. Thanks for tuning in. Replicant, of course. Awesome artist, Replicant. Mr. Von Stugel. Camara uh, was here earlier. He's, this is kind of like a breakthrough, and I realized this earlier today as well. It says, Kelsey is the American more drunk version of Simon Bisley. And that, uh, I don't know about the more drunk thing sometimes, you know, but especially in the early days, like maybe a, a few years ago on streams. Lord Crackhead, what's up, brother? Edwin the Ace, Acevedo in the house. And there he is again, Camara. Kelsey ain't showing. He was on a stream late. He was on Ethan's stream last night. Um, and Joe, Joe, of course, goes up to his channel. Oh, there we go. I did. I was censored. Oh, there's the eggplant. Hail, brother. Well, let's get uh, the man... The myth, the legend, the rock star of CG, former, maybe still member of the Kiss Army. Here he is, Archie Bear. Hey, how you doing? But but for the record, I was never an official <laughs> Kiss Army member. Oh my god! <laughs> I was. Told I dug those way. guys in the day, but uh, I never, I never made the plunge. I never took the plunge, man. <laughs> I never armored up. I never, I, I never went to right. battle. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love Kiss, man. And, but and, you know, tempted. That's that's a pretty cool group of people to be part of. Yeah, Kiss is great. Uh, it, it's crazy how long they've been popular. Like when I I thought they were. I mean, I'm very young, but I thought they were new when I was a kid, and like they were around in the '70s. They got started in the '70s, which is crazy. You know what's funny is I almost wore my 40th anniversary Kiss T-shirt. For the show, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got my uh, Bisley heavy metal shirt on. Heavy metal, yeah, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about the biz. Hopefully, Kelsey shows up. I sent the link out to a few other guys as well. Um, and if not, Art, it's just gonna be me and you, brother. We can do it. We can uh, we can uh, entertain for an hour or so. Now, you of course um, have been creating comics for a long time. Have you ever met, uh, met Simon Bisley? A couple times, yeah. 
Really cool. Now, what did he look like when you met him? Because there's a few phases of the biz that I've I've seen, you know, through looking up uh, research in this guy, not stalking him at all. You were stalking him. Be, no. be honest. <laughs> there's, there's a few different looks from him from over the years. Uh, well, I did, he's, I did he's a big he's a big man regardless of the year um, mm -hmm. some years he might be bigger than others but uh, he's a hulking uh, he's a hulking status of a man he's a, he's a pretty massive dude I'm not I'm like five seven so anybody's tall next to me right, but you're but still taller than Mike S. Miller uh, that's always I'm, always will be yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, um, I, I did a convention with, God, it was probably like 10 years ago now and, uh, it was here in Texas Yeah. and, uh, we, uh, we would see, he'd have mimosa breakfast every, every morning. The dude <laughs> loves to drink. He loves to yeah. drink more than I do. So, um, he's usually inebriated on some level. I think he's just probably 24 seven. He's, that's how he is. I, I have a few friends that are like that. They're just. There's drunk all the time. And yeah. so uh, he keeps coming by. Like I, I do these shows. I used to do a lot of the shows with my daughter. My daughter uh, cosplays and she she's a model and, uh, and she's an artist. Yeah. And so they would set her up with her booth. So she'd usually be next to mine. And so um, Bisley would keep coming by the booth. He, he wouldn't come by my booth. He'd just come by her booth. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good. And so, it, you know, you're talking about stalking and not really saying anything, just kind of going up. He would kind of, you know, ruffle through some of the artwork, look at it, things like that. So he finally comes comes back around and says something. This is over days, uh, period of time. And so he picks up uh, this Catwoman drawing that Amanda did and he goes, how much? And she tells him, he goes, he goes I'll be back. And so, <laughs> so that's it. And so then I finally go, she goes like, what, what's going on, dad? I go, that's, that's Simon busy. I mean, that's the guy that we've been having breakfast with and stuff like that. I mean, he's, he's a brilliant artist. And she's like, yeah. oh, oh, the guy's kind of <laughs> creeping me out. <laughs> and so, so he did, he came back and he bought the piece of artwork. That's and awesome. so um, I, I was like, holy shit, you know, you just, you know, Simon Bisley bought a piece of your artwork, Amanda. That's that's big time. And so, you know, I'm finally like, uh, hey, hey, Simon, Artsy Bear. Hey, Simon, like, pay attention to me. And so, <laughs> so he's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And, and so then I, I, I had to do this. I go, uh, I usually don't do stuff like this. So I said, we need a picture. I need I, we need to commemorate this moment. My daughter, when she looks up, your, I, I didn't say this, but I was just thinking it. Once she looks up this guy's artwork, she's gonna flip out. Like yeah. she just, she has no idea who this guy is. And so uh, we get out in front of the booth. Like I said, the guy's a monster. We're both kind of under his arm, so he's he's in the center of us, right? Yeah. And so we got somebody to take the picture, and uh, I'm thinking like, wow, this is a great moment, Simon Bisley. This is this is freaking killer. And so then. Um, the crowd kind of start laughing. He puts his hulking arms around both of us, like little kids, right? Uh -huh. He's holding the piece of artwork and he's like this, and um, I'm gonna move my hand in now. This is what he's doing <laughs> with both fingers. Dude, he, he is low it's like <laughs> So like right beside each one of our heads is a middle finger. <laughs> And so, yeah, we looked at the, he walks away, we look at the image and yeah, sure enough, um, yeah, Simon Bisley flipped us the bird. <laughs> there he is. I mean, he he's the uh, epitome of Lobo, you know? And uh, there he is, this is, I don't know how far ago this was, but he looked like a mixture between this and this when I met him. This is what he looks like now. <laughs> Yeah, he was clean shaven when I saw him, but he was wearing glasses. So it was kind of like, he looked like this, but just without a beard. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, we got Frega Boom in the chat. What's up, Frega Boom? How's it going? What's up, brother? Pimps? Uh, J Money also in the chat. Yeah. 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 When I met him, so here's a picture of me when I met him. He didn't flip the bird, but this is 
this is like uh, 2014, I think. And uh, I was I was young. And you're a kid. Look at those dimples. Yeah, yeah. I still have them. They're they're hiding though. But uh, yeah, he, I was there the whole weekend. And I didn't know he was gonna be there. And I'm you know huge Lobo fan. So he did this kick-ass piece for me. And dude, uh, you it, are tall because he's yeah. a big dude. You're taller than he is. Holy yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taller than him. But I came, uh, I was just walking around the whole weekend and, you know, talking with him. And he was doing shots of Jack Daniels with fans at his table, which was, <laughs> I've never seen anyone do that at a con. And then uh, also he, uh, my buddies from high school came. This was a few years after high school. And I had this, this friend who was a, a girl and she, I think she was in cosplay, but she had like a school schoolgirl length skirt on and then we were just walking past and he was like cat calling to her kind of <laughs> while he was drawing it was hilarious and she was all flattered and stuff which is you know that's how things used to be you know yeah women used to get flattered but then I, now, you know, now he would be asked to leave <laughs> yeah he would be <laughs> out. hopefully not he, he could work his uh his busy charm but check this out this is um old biz like back in the day biz He's got, he's got those, like, 70s glasses. And then, I didn't know this, but uh, Simon Bisley was a male model. Did you know this? No, I didn't. Look at this guy. Look at that. that. Before not... his life went south. <laughs> <laughs> he had so much ahead of him, you know? Yeah, he had his that, future. That, that mane. Look at, he's he could give Fabio a little bit of competition here. Yeah, and then after he did this, I remember he, or I heard he got into like bodybuilding, and that's a lot of people um, attest that to his crazy muscle anatomy structure and and characters like Lobo and Slime. Well, well you know what, uh, Jack Daniels is a big part of uh, the workout regime for most people. Really? <laughs> no, I don't know. No. There you go. Uh, yeah, William C's got it. Stalker. People call me a stalker. Let's see. Uh, Vanessa in the chat. What's up, Vanessa? Why are you having Art look back at his his old modeling days back in the 15th century? <laughs> well, thank you. I was better looking than uh, than this guy. Oh, Damn. what is this? Oh my gosh! <laughs> this is like for Vampire Magazine or something. I don't know. Yeah. What What is he writing? Romance novels for uh, <laughs> for for young young ladies. <laughs> I promise. This is like the back of like you know those like pretentious novels. Yeah, like a, like a romantic vampire novel. Yeah, his art is cooler than this. People, we'll get into it. But I thought this piece was cool too. Him riding a motorcycle, motorcycle guy. He's over here. So yeah, that, and that's you. That's you on the left. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I got bigger arms than this guy. Calm down, Art. But uh, yeah, let's. I do never it. said I was excited. I just said that was you. <laughs> <laughs> But but truth be known, I was a little excited. I'm glad. I'm glad. Just, okay, I'm gonna switch my camera over here. Um, let's see if we can do this cool layout is this here. The wall of uh, wall of Bisley behind you. I mean, there's 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 a big Lobo statue that I just got. You know, there's one in the cabinet behind you too. Is it off to the side? Yes, this one. That's got like yeah. the Bisley head on it. Yeah, that set you back a little bit. Yes, it for sure did. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, we got another a Bisley fan and amazing artist in the chat or in the, in the stream. Ladies and just gentlemen, Preston Acevedo. Hey. What's up, man? Thanks for hopping in. Hey. I, didn't know, I didn't know you was going to do it this early. Like I was like, but I seen the link and I was like, no, nah, I got to get in there. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, no, I'm off today. So I wanted to do and these afternoon streams. There's no one really streaming right now. Um, let's see. Biz groomed Phil confirmed. That's not true. Dan Frey, Dan, Dan Frey groomed me. Dan Frey groomed me. He did a good job, too. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, I got this kind of like a weird camera set up so we could look at all this uh, cool stuff here. So, of course, we got the beautiful cover he did for Lock Raiders. And I wanted to compare that to the actual sketchbook because sketchbook's like magazine sized so you can see well a little bit bigger look at that because this is a heavy metal and then here's the uh the sketchbook he did and just to tell you guys i was working with 
the guy that put his sketchbook together, his name's Andy Brown. It's a buddy of his in uh, the UK. And when I sent him the lost pages for Simon to sign, he loved the cover, uh, like feeling so much. It's got like that, uh, that velvety soft touch coating that he's like, Hey, I'm going to do that for the sketchbook. So it has the same feel. And uh, also it doesn't leave fingerprints. So it, it feels, right. it feels uh, interesting. It's almost like rubber, right? But it, yeah. it doesn't leave fingerprints. Yeah. That's what I love about it. Uh, such a cool thing. And um, yeah, I think this was only like 40 bucks on the Kickstarter. Uh, they sent this print with every copy as well. This is like a new Ninja Turtles piece he did. Really nice stock paper. Awesome stuff. And uh, this is... Hey, a... Phil, hold on for a sec. Um, are you... Yeah. What kind of camera are you using? I'm using a Logitech camera. Watch. Yeah, if you go into the Logitech settings, mm -hmm. um, because your camera is bouncing every time you move um, something, if you go into your Logitech settings, um advance and then you go with camera control if you click off focus and exposure your camera won't bounce like that all right let me see if i can do that so it it's like me. Sick, but I almost don't want to <laughs> it's Jeez. focusing um and then unfocusing you're saying yeah oh my god how do i do this art i wouldn't have said it but i know that we're mostly going to be focusing on the sketchbook and stuff so you know what? One of my favorite Bisley books, and yeah. I, I stumbled upon this, right? Because I'm also a Misfits fan and dancing. Mm -hmm. And this is what I found, right? The uh, So this this has all of the Misfits songs and Sam Hain songs in it. But yeah. they got the lyrics on one side, and then it's oh, got wow. a Bisley illustration on the other side that goes with the song. You know? And yeah, this, was, this just blew my mind, dude. Like it's got some seriously cool shit in there. Yeah. yeah wow. It's awesome. Yeah. It gets sicker too. Like the, the deeper you go into it, just the I worked on uh the new fifty two uh Deathstroke series and mm -hmm. I didn't know Simon was gonna do all the covers. Cause you know, like you you, you get kind of pissy because you're like, Well, why didn't I get to do the covers, right? Yeah. And very few times do you ever go, Oh, you know, I'm glad I didn't do the cover, right? So when I got the book back printed, I was like, holy shit, Simon Bisley's doing the cover. This I've is seen awesome. that. I was like, at first I was like, these covers look familiar, like the art style. And then I was like, <laughs> holy shit, Bisley did this. Like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Here, let me see. Uh, devices. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you have, didn't you get that? Do you have that new uh, book that you got uh, that was Bisley painting? Uh, Preston? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, it's a, uh, it's a book where, um, Plug did all of the, uh, illustrations and then Bisley went back and painted every, every one of them. Yeah. You know? Wow. And that makes me sick because, dude, I missed out on the campaign for that one. Yeah. You know, I, I had to go to eBay to actually find the book because I want the art book, you know, like the, the artist edition. Yes. And, um, but, if I would have, like, now I'm constantly checking Kickstarter and shit like that because I don't want to miss out anymore. <laughs> I could have got a signed edition of the uh, artist edition, you know what I'm saying? For, by Plug and Bisley for like $250. But because I missed the campaign, I paid $275 for the artist edition on eBay, unsigned, you know? So it was, I don't know. Just... All right, I have uh, an issue. I don't know how to do that. Okay, are you where, where? Where are you in your settings right now? Uh, I'm in the uh, device, like devices, and clicking on Logitech, the camera. And yeah, and then and then it click advanced. Oh, advanced. Let's see. Um, and then what should open up is uh, properties, and then it says video, and then it says camera control. Do you see that in the left corner? Details. I think I have the same camera as you. Here, we'll give a behind the scenes walkthrough. And so then if you click work. camera control, um, there's focus and exposure. Logitech properties.
Oh, yours is different. Yeah, you on a Mac or something? <clears throat> I don't know. But but there's like on on mine there's and actually uh, under camera control that there's a setting that says <laughs> camera control um, under focus and exposure. If you click those off, then um, it won't constantly try to you know adjust to whenever you move things around. Phil, the chat's saying you're too young to be a boomer, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can just roll with it. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I think if you move it and then hold it in place, it, it'll it'll stay. But just don't move it too much, and then it won't bounce around. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry guys. about that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, but thanks for tuning in, guys. If you guys are here, then hit that like button. And also... Um, Subscribe if you guys haven't already. So yeah, this was on Kickstarter, and it was just like a hundred bucks for the book, and he would do a colored head sketch for you. So I had him do my Grimstone character again, which he had already done for the cover of the Lost Pages. Uh, so super cool. You know, this is traditional, I think, watercolored on here. Really awesome, one of a kind. So, is that nine by twelve? Is that Bristol board? This is, uh, I think it's just like some sort of heavy paper. It's not Bristol board. Maybe it's watercolor paper. I'm not sure. Wow, that's cool. But Bisley paints hard. on anything, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> literally, he doesn't follow any of the rules when it comes to, like, as far as medium. I've, dude, I've, I've, like, the dude just, I think he just, like, reaches out and whatever he grabs, that's what he paints on. Yeah. <laughs> whatever he grabs with this hand that's what he paints with <laughs> you know what I'm saying like <laughs> it's so crazy yeah, you, you were able to get like uh, three different covers this is the one I you know, of course you get the hot babe one and uh, signed by the biz and this is you know, sketches preliminary stuff and doodles from anywhere between 1988 to 2020 uh, so it's a bunch of stuff and um, so you can see here some 2000 AD, this is one of my favorite characters, is Joe Pineapples from ABC Warriors. He's like this weird robot bounty hunter guy. And of course, going into Slain, look at that. And a notable thing that I always see in his work, especially from his early stuff in the 90s, is like this splatter effect, right? Where either it's dirt or grime or blood, did that a lot in Lobo uh, when he would ink stuff. On his... The stuff he did with Slain, like you can kind of tell he was he he was kind of new to comics, you know, because mm -hmm. he relied heavy, heavy on that airbrush. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um he like he used he used this a, a little bit of paintbrush, but it's heavy airbrush on those on a, on those early slain pieces. Yeah. You know? oh, I saw someone in the chat they loved uh the Ninja Turtles body count, which is like super rare now and really expensive. I guess they never reprinted it, but it was him doing all the art, I think painted. Um, and then Eastman wrote the, the story. And wow, that Ninja Turtles image is really tight. Those pencils are tight. I didn't think he, he penciled that tightly. That, that is love, tight. That's way tighter. Jones. So cool. But I remember, I think if you guys are interested in that body count issue, uh, your boy Zach did a video on it, going through it digitally. That's badass. Are so, there any of his Batman uh, Dread crossover stuff in there? Man, um, that thing was gorgeous. Yeah, I, have, uh, I actually have those signed by him. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that. I think he has some Dread pieces in here. I'm not sure if he has any Batman. The, the, the cool thing about this book was his like team put out like a, a message on Facebook, like, Hey, if you have any sketches that Simon's done for you, like in the past, you could send them in and we'll put them in the book. So some of this stuff is owned by fans as well, which is pretty cool. That's a great idea. I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> some color work here too. And it, it's awesome. Cause over the years, of course, the artist is going to develop different styles. Um, but compared to from like his line work stuff to his painting, painted stuff too. Uh, 
is this all over the place as far as uh, timeline? So it's not like yeah. from the beginning to his newest. Yeah, there. I don't think it's in sequential order, chronological order. But as you can see, some really rough stuff as well. This, his figure work is awesome. Like, wow, it looks a little Kelly Jones ish on the uh, or uh, what's his name? Um, Jeffrey Jones on the uh, right side there. Frazetta. Oh, yeah, we'll see a lot of like there's a lot of Conan pieces in here too. Uh, of course, the Death Dealer, Frazetta's Death Dealer stuff, which he did, um, I think, the first issue of the F Death Dealer comic. Is that right, Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. The, uh, you like one thing I love about Bisley's stuff too. Like he's, he's super, super sure about his lawn work. You know what I'm saying? Like even when he's doing his sketches, like I, I, I think one of the most educational things I've ever was, was seeing him paint and draw at a show, you know, because I hope like most artists, they just sketch, 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 and then they pull out what lawns they want. You know, with yeah. him, I seen him draw like a Ninja Turtle and he's just like, <laughs> he's just outlining everything. Well, he's yeah, he just board. like it's he doesn't really sketch, he just draws, you know? Yeah. And then then he goes back and he paints it, but what the way he paints it, like he um he uses I understand that. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta find my phone. He uses <laughs> he was using watercolor, but um the uh and I was like because I always liked the way like in that Batman Judge Dredd um like crossover. Like yeah. the way he did Judge Death, right? Where he had the rolling, fleshy smoke on it. And yeah, I was like, that's so, so cool, right? And what he did was he let the he let his watercolors bleed intentionally, and then he went ahead and he highlighted like the bleeds, oh. you know, to yeah. get that that look. And I was like, dude, <laughs> was like, it's like boom, you know, it's like why mm -hmm. it's it's so fucking simple, you know. And you can see some of his super undetailed stuff and then over to the fully rendered uh titty page over here and the thing that i love about uh the biz is his sense of humor mixing you know wacky stuff in here so you can see this dog is in the water yeah. <laughs> thumbs up it's taking a dump the dog's yeah. taking a dump but um where you get a lot of the humor from books like lobo for sure he, he uses a lot of charcoal too like he did something called the tower series and mm -hmm. he, I guess they couldn't afford to pay him to go ahead and ink it. So he just did the whole thing in charcoal, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and they had a colorist come in and color it and it was still good. Like it was really good. You could tell it was like a busily, you know, bug. Yeah. This was the main cover you could have got for, for this book as well, or the, maybe the hardcover edition. Really cool. Like a mixture between the death dealer and judge death. Awesome. How much is the hardcover? Um, it was probably like 60, 70 bucks. I could check. I have it pulled up for me. Give me a second. So, so the campaign's still running. It is over. I think you can get the books now on the secondary market on their website, which is berserker art, berserker art.com. Um, yeah, let's see here. This was, uh, here was the page. Where is this? Come on. There we go. So yeah, you could see uh, this was the Kickstarter page. They raised fifty-seven thousand uh, pounds. And I, you have to think like if this was on Indiegogo, how much more would they still be making if it was in demand? You know, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You because could double that for sure. Because you know, Indiegogo they love their comics, and you know, Bisley's a rock star. But yeah, here's an, another cover you were able to get like kind of like the sketch cover pretty cool pretty simple campaign too and uh a lot of the extra stuff were original pieces because you know either whether it's paintings head sketches colored headshots uh stuff like that so it's pretty cool Let's see what else we got here yeah yeah i wonder if like these characters were ever used for stuff or they're just like kind of like concepts and I think he's just a mad doodler. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's probably got hundreds of stuff, you know, like drawings yeah. like this around the studio. Cause yeah, these are cool. not like, 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 uh, these are not labored. You know what I mean? Like these are just like thrown down. 
Yeah, you yeah. can always tell like he's he's having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's not mm-hmm. like like you said, like he's 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 just he's just drawing, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm like he's not he's not really paying attention to anything, just fucking drawing. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. it's easy inspiring to look at this stuff just for character. I got the uh fact two, like uh Bisley's movie edition of Fact Two. Yeah. And uh he never he like like he has one one part there where he uh, drew a character and the character's got a cock coming out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Yeah, he's been famous for like uh, making triceps look like penises, right? On uh, on arms. Here's this cut the Conan stuff is so cool. Look at this. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was working with Dave Finch on Ultimate X Men, and I asked, I, I said, I said, Dave, I said your biggest influence is is simon bisley and i said and i said dare i say kevin nolan and he said you nailed it he said those two artists are mm-hmm. my style and uh he specifically said kevin nolan over dan jurgens on do you remember the superman uh, uh pre- no what was it aliens the uh superman uh alien crossover i think it was yeah three- yeah i remember that yeah, yeah. oh my gosh that is killer kevin nolan just killed it on that um and so he said that specific kevin nolan job and then just anything simon bisley kevin kevin always had like the thing about kevin's work is the eyes you know what i'm saying like like he he did he like the character's eyes he always did that like super super unique like you could just look at the character's eyes and see that's a kevin nolan piece yeah you know? right and it was always kind of gothic. Like he always gave him this gothic like look. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, I knew that um, about Dave Finch. He's he always he says that a lot on his, his streams and stuff. Like how much he loves Bisley. Yeah, I mean you can definitely see it. Wow, these are these are great compositions and just gorgeous drawings. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, and I know uh, Chris has a huge influence on on the biz, and I'm sure it was awesome getting to work with him on, on stuff like death dealer and uh, that that was the glenn danzig uh publishing line yeah. right erotic yeah erotic yeah yeah um someone was showing me uh i think it was uh arthur brown on candy kodiak hit me up and he's like oh you should take a look at what was it called uh, jaguar king jaguar that, god uh, yeah jaguar i got jaguar that god. dude that's like i could yeah. say this like danzig he um he did a good job with Death Dealer, yeah. yeah. Devil Man, not so much, yeah. But um, but the covers Bisley did for Devil Man was fucking insane. Like it was great. Um, yeah. Jaguar God was another one that was just insanely good, dude. And mm-hmm. I don't think Bisley did the whole series. Like they had another artist come in and take over. Like I guess he was Bisley's relief artist. But it took me a minute to figure out if that was Bisley or not. Yeah, you know, like it was, yeah. it, it was that close. Yeah, because I know uh, Alex Horley did an issue because I was looking through them um, online, and uh, someone took over for the last few issues. That is a famous artist, but I can't remember who it is. I don't think it was. I, I get, I get people mixed up a lot, but uh, but yeah, I know Bisley did some some cool work on that. I love. I mean, this chick's so cool. She's like very. Uh, very like um, uh, tank girl esque. Pretty cool design. I don't even know if we could show these on uh, YouTube, but uh, an ass too good for YouTube. And here's this is a guy I see him draw a lot too. This character I don't know what he's from though. Big guns, lots of bodies. And the biz is like, I've seen interviews with him. He says one of his favorite things to draw are animals. Like he just knocks out of the park with uh, like jaguars and cheetahs and stuff like that. Especially with his his paintings from the 90s. Again, very uh, Frizzetta like. Look at this chimp. Yeah, I like that. (laughs) I'm looking for that. that photograph oh where yeah you know, people i can't find it though yeah <laughs> he's great with textures 
I love the uh, the way this he does his This was texture. awesome because it looks like it's painted on a piece of concrete. The way he yeah. does the texture. Look at that. Very yeah, cool. he was he was way ahead of his time with um with all of his with all his paintings back in the, in the nineties. Yeah, it was it was crazy. It's surprising that a guy like John Malin didn't even know who Simon Bisley was. You, Are you kidding? Me? No, <laughs> he knew. Yeah, he was. He had to be fucking what you did. He had to be. Right. <laughs> oh, I think this is like my favorite piece in the book. It's just so cool. Like, yeah, who's his badass? I like that one next to it too. Yeah, this is kind of like that Judge Death is what you were talking about. Yeah. The body. The uh, uh, extricator says. Simon Bisley should be painting every hard rock heavy metal album cover (laughs) ever done. Like he just painted them all. I would love to see his version of Eddie uh, from Iron Maiden, like uh, Bisley to do a cover. That would yeah. be brilliant, man. That would be cool. I'm surprised. They should have hired him to do the series for heavy metal. I hear um, some metal. This is uh, Peter Steele, right? Ah, uh, is it? I think this. I, yeah, I think so. I know he got commissioned to do some. Heavy oh no, no, it's got the Danzig skull. It's Danzig. Oh, it's Danzig. Well, it looks a little. Yeah. Tall. And these are cool, like uh, thumbnails. I know he did work for, I don't know what company did these back in the day, but they were basically like Leatherface versus Jason. Do you guys remember yeah. those? Yeah, and- I remember that. Yeah, he did the uh, cover for that, and also, like, it was I can't remember what what company it was that put that stuff out, but he did a bunch of covers for. Them. Yeah. Well, that one in the uh, upper left side, that thing could be printed as is. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's one thing I can say about like Bisley, Tim Vigil, all those guys. Like I'm like I was at Tim Vigil's table at a at a show and Tim was like doing a thumbnail of a of a you know full blown piece he was gonna do. And I was like and I was blown away because literally it was like the size of a business card, right? But it was more detailed than anything I seen at that show. <laughs> I was like, Jesus wow. Christ, dude. And uh, Alex Ross, too. Alex Ross is another one where his thumbnails are just crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been posting some just like sketches up and they're crazy. Yeah, Bisley can do some crazy, like awkward shit, like that one on the left. Like that's really an awkward pose. Yeah. yeah. And he makes it work. Like there's no way, like physics really, you know, no, <laughs> we're, we're working there. But man, it's it's so good. You know, he can pull it off. Like like anything he does just oozes testosterone. <laughs> and like it's all metal. Yeah. For sure. Oh, and this is some of my favorite. I don't know if you guys ever read um what's it called? Fistful of Blood. It was basically like yeah. Eastman's take on Clint Eastwood's Big Eddie Westerns. With this chick, I don't think she speaks through the whole book, but she like comes to a town. Uh, and it's run, run by two gangs, two rival gangs. One are zombies, one are vampires. Yeah, I remember that. That was bad. I like the guy, the the one uh, zombie is going full Tex Avery. <laughs> Where his eyes popping <laughs> right out towards the book. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's yeah, awesome. he, he's not afraid to do cartoony stuff, too. Uh, he, kinda, he definitely, I've seen him do some sketch cards that have like a cartoony style to them. That's another you know rule that he breaks too, because when I was when I was showing my portfolio around at shows, yeah, yeah. um, like like artists would tell me like you got to pick a side, like you either got to be cartoony or you got to be serious. You can't be, but and I was like, but why? <laughs> why do you have to pick a? Side? Oh, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's easier to market yourself if you pick a side, but as an artist, it's pretty boring, right? It is, dude. It's extremely boring. It's like, it's like that's why I like playing with other mediums too, because it's like I, I you know, I never get burnout since I started doing that, you know. But if I'm always doing pencils or I'm always doing inks or something like that, like it's so easy to fall into like a like get like burned out on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm finally in a place right now with CG that like all that experimental stuff, things like that, I can actually do now. Like oh, when yeah. you're for you know mainstream. 
uh, unless you are like Simon Busy. There's a few exceptions, but most of the time they want you to draw a certain way, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I, your chrono mechanics, like I was used to your work on black and white, you know, where it was kind of like Jim Lee style, but seeing chrono mechanics, I was like, I think this is, this is the real art there right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, fun, man. It is fun. And I'll it just seem like good. you enjoyed it more doing chrono yeah. mechanics than you did like like doing that version of black and white where it kind of looked like a Jim Lee type of style. Yeah. Well, I like all the, the, like the heavy metal guys, all the European guys, you know, and there just really wasn't much of a, a, you know, I did try to bring some of that into, you know, those influences into my mainstream work, but you can't really embrace it the way you would like to. No. So you know, when I got, when I, when I made the opportunity for myself and, and gladly got support for it, you know, Chrono Mechanics allowed me to just go nuts, you know? Yeah. Show the hardest them. part is to do what you want to do and still get paid for it. You know, oh, that's, absolutely. that's the toughest part. For sure. Now, yeah, but you can tell like you had uh, that flow, like you was in the zone throughout chrono mechanics, you know, like it was like, you know, like Art Dibbert unleashed, you know, like, <laughs> where it was like the rest of the stuff. Like, I get it. Like Marvel needed somebody that could keep up with Jim Lee. You know what I'm saying? And there's not a lot of people that could do that. Yeah, that's that's be straight. Like there's at least at, especially at that time in the 90s like it was like there was nobody that could keep up with jim lee so check this except out. This for is, our uh, this <laughs> guy i think oliver you're right this looks like the character from the video game splatterhouse which is like a 90s uh horror slasher game uh he's got the mask too so that's right and of course julie strain kind of like that fact two character shouts to her r.i.p she died uh, a few months ago of course, Kevin Eastman's ex-wife. More of her stuff. But I love his, like, the Europeans can do this, like, like on the right side, that ink line is, I, I love that ink line. Like, if you look at, I, I know I brought up Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Jones um, in the past, in, you know, earlier, but they just have that just devil may care, just kind yeah. of, they're just moving with the pen. And to get that kind of spontaneity and that kind of movement, it's not that easy. That's confidence. Like to do that, that's confidence um, that the artist has. Um, if you look at even, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Um, Barry Windsor Smith, you know, uh, when he does like little cartoon drawings like that, it's done the same way. There's just like this this really uh, nice organic movement um, to the drawing i mean it's like they're drawing with the ink they're not inking a drawing you know yeah kind of thing. yeah you see a lot of that in his uh original lobo miniseries in the 90s the hair especially female hair and stuff like that like and that. lobo that, that first lobo series broke every rule <laughs> in yeah. comics like sure. it was crazy dude yeah uh, i'm surprised it even made it to the newsstand like that's yeah it was like brutal <laughs> yeah. you know well, he would he would rip heads out with the spine attached. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, it was nuts. Yeah, some of those fucking fight scenes, I was like, God damn, son. <laughs> yeah, his paramilitary Christmas special. He's like blowing elves' heads apart, eyes. Apart, you know? <laughs> and it's like this is from DC Comics. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, like that shit you would you would expect from Heavy Metal magazine, dude. Right. It was like it was nuts. Yeah, you know, not, and you know not what so- the thing is? There were they, when you do it matter of factly, you just put it out there and you don't make a big deal about it either. Either way, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just let the work speak for itself. And, yeah, and it's either going to sink or swim. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Like the market, the market will either support it or or discount it. And and the thing is, they supported it each and every time. And that's the thing I don't like about the market these days is they're almost like they're telling you this is this is the work you should like this is what you should like this is what you shouldn't yeah. like and and i don't exactly. i don't like that like like if busy was was a young guy right now trying to get into the you know it. he would they wouldn't embrace him man like like he would be canceled left and right and the only reason he's not canceled now is because you can't cancel the guy he's got like you know a 35 <laughs> plus year career yeah. Um, he's a mainstay in the comics industry. He's a legend. You can't touch him. 
you know. Yeah, he would definitely be a comic skate guy if he uh, <laughs> well, if he was just cool. coming out right now. Yeah, he'd yeah. be blowing our minds if he was yeah. you know, my age coming out with stuff like this. Well, he would have to be comic skate because no one else that would shit wouldn't fly. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah imagine how uh you know awesome a uh 30 year old bisley on streams with cecil would be <laughs> uh the shit would fly i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah because i i mean i've heard some stories frega said he was drinking with bisley one time and bisley randomly almost got into a fight with him because frega sat in a in the wrong chair because they were so drunk and he's like, calm down, man. I'm just sitting down. Like, Take this outside. Fucking awesome. But yeah, <laughs> use the animal like stuff you see that is just so it, it seems like he's having fun when he's doing the animals. Yeah. That that image on the left almost seems Joe Mad. You know, like it's it's yeah. it's heightened cartoony, you know. Um yeah. it reminds me of old school Bugs Bunny shit, to be honest. Like that uh that you know, like um uh, uh, Chuck Jones almost as yeah. far as that bear's face. Yeah, there's some cartooning in the bear for sure. I just love this. This is one of my favorites too. Just the angle that she's at, the perspective there. Yeah. Very sick. Yeah, look at that. Oh, and the baboons. Baboons. Stuff. So cool. I think this is uh, Red Sonia Vampirella. I don't know what this trick is, though. What a badass. And then, have you guys seen, I know um, Richard Friend has been doing, he did a, he's doing a series right now on Bisley's Bible. He has, like, all the scans of it. And, you know, Bisley illustrated the Bible, which is really cool. I still have to watch that. But uh, I know that's a very, very rare book. Super expensive online right now. I got his, um, he did something called the uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse for mm -hmm. uh, Heavy Metal. And I don't know why they didn't just do four issues. You know, I thought that would be cool, but they did yeah. three issues. <laughs> oh my and, um, but it is fucking incredible, dude. When I, you know, I don't know, they, they wouldn't let him do the covers either, which is, which is very weird, you know, yeah, but really weird. yeah, but each one of as they introduce each one of the horsemen, like it's just they're even more insane than than the last one, yeah. You know? Because obviously, Vis Bisley designed each one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like that's that's crazy, incredible. I don't know about like I heard about his Bible illustrations, but I was wondering yeah. did did he find Jesus or something like that, or <laughs> and I who think which... he found uh, money and someone paid him to? <laughs> no, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying too. And if not, like who which crazy Catholic out there was like hire Simon Bisley to do the Bible? <laughs> it's incredible, man. I think there's a piece from it in here. I I don't know what these are from either, but they all uh, have this kind of like Caesar esque character in them. I'm just a sucker for any badass sitting on like a throne with pot baits by him. So this is like killer stuff. And this is the next few pages has this this like uh, emperor guy in them. Some lady bits here. Wow, these are amazing. Yeah, and this is just pencil stuff. That is killer composition. It's like I I don't know who this character is, but I want to read a book about him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> badass and there's some Jesus action some fighting and then this was I think this is Satan falling from heaven or you know Damien or Lucifer from the Bible and this is just crazy I don't know if you know painted or what. that's like looking at that like that that actually follows along with a lot of his illustrations like yeah. all right do you see it do you see how stiff that character looks but he he does it the same way on every one of his characters but it always works you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah. like he, like they don't follow within that smooth movement as far as you know how a character should be or how they want you to draw you know yeah. comic characters yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah and and I, I don't know if this is pencil or charcoal yeah, I don't know. It's probably both. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, this guy does not follow any rules, dude. Like it's it's crazy. 
Look at that. That's so cool, man. <laughs> Look at that guy on the right side. That guy's awesome. You just put a, a, a dick mask on him and that's Cecil. You know? yeah. <laughs> I like he, he thought so much of the hat that he actually gave it like a brown tone to it. Like He's like, well, you know what? I want the hat to stand out. <laughs> Great mustache. Look at that. So cool. I wonder if this is a... Um, I'm thinking this is a life drawing of someone like he was looking at. With a Frazetta in the background, is that? Yeah. It, yeah, the Frazetta. It, did Frazetta smoke? Maybe it's Frazetta. Yeah, maybe. Build. Yeah, Frazetta was a skinny dude. It could yeah, be. Build. That would be really cool. That could be a portrait of uh, Frank Frazetta. Good call. That's awesome. And then little thing. This is another one of my favorites. This was done in '98, and this is totally the style of what he would be putting out in Lobo, especially these these just wild backgrounds. Another thing you were talking about earlier, art with that just devil may care ink line. Like this is building, and this is what the buildings looked like on the different planets in the Lobo series, where just scratch, you know, and the colorist would just tone this. And I love just the painting for like the detail on the. Uh the um the overcoat and stuff like that yeah. just yeah just it's like it, even when he inks it's still kind of multimedia mm -hmm. it looks like he did the uh the background blacks with the marker like a like a el marco you know those those big, those yeah. big uh, felt tips because <laughs> <laughs> it's all going in this in this weird pattern it's definitely not brush i love his shadows too like he he always, like, it seems like he doesn't do everything high detailed. He just picks out certain parts and just super details that part and then lets the rest of just kind of flow out. You know? Yeah, that's that's kind of the classic uh, illustrator, um, you know, because he, he really likes Frank Frazetta, uh, Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. Like, you can you can see that classic stuff in there. And that's how those guys would do it. You know, like, like Frank Frazetta, he would just, he would just sharply you know, like it would be in sharp focus, whatever he wanted you to really look at anything else would kind of fade out, um, you know, um, in detail. Well, and that's, so, I was, um, I was talking to another artist. This, it was another painter over at, um, a uh, show and we were talking about art and stuff like that. And I was telling him like, whenever I paint, like I spend a lot of time on the area that I want you to focus on. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then the rest is kind of just like it the detail kind of fades out as you go, you know, you 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 go out, you know. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, dude. Like, but yeah, like there's a lot of people that do that, dude. And you can look at this busily piece, like you can see the dude's crotch right there, like it's super detailed, you know, with the fucking wrinkles and stuff like that, you know, torn jeans. And uh well, just a composition too, where the black the black circles around. He actually has a white circle right where the face is. The gun um, section is open. Like there's a lot of stuff just compositionally that he's really. This is just beautiful composition. Yeah. It's just forcing you to see uh, what he wants you to see, you know. And then like the guy behind him is in black, you know. So it's it's you know he, he wants you to see that he's he's kicking these guys' ass, but he doesn't want you to spend too much time on it. You know, yeah. yeah, this style of Bisley might be my my favorite, probably because, you know, the old Lobo stuff, but I just loved his line work from the 90s. And it yeah. kind of changed over a while. Um, but I, I think he did an amazing job on the cover he did for us, kind of reminiscent of that. So I'm glad um, right. we got a line piece because we were able, you know, you could get a, a painted piece from him as well, which is know very uh up there in price but it's kick-ass you look at books like uh camara's sos he got a, a awesome painted cover for uh sos onslaught and here's the back of this he did a crazy self-portrait so you can see here he's smoking a <laughs> cigarette through his nose yeah <laughs> pretty cool stuff uh camara had a question in the chat he wanted to know what uh jaguar god was oh I'll, I'll, i pulled it up here um just to show the cover, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of great breasts in this book. I think there's the women in this book are never not naked. 
<laughs> but you could check it out on uh, readcomicsonline.com. It's basically, uh, is this Verotic? Yeah, it's Verotic book. Um, Danzig wrote it. There's a few different artists on it. I think Frazetta, yeah, Frazetta, this is the Frazetta cover. Frazetta had a huge hand in uh, with all of his, his property. Like when Danzig licensed all his properties, I think Frazetta actually offered to illustrate you know, uh, the Death Dealer book. He was like, no, 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 no. You know, because Frazetta was like 70 something years old at the time. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And how uh, do you they, not, how do you not go? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But <laughs> I think, I think he just, he didn't want to stress Frazetta because Danzig had a huge amount of respect for, for Frank Frazetta. Yeah. You know, huge amount. And, um, but yeah, like Frank had a huge part in all of those books that were being produced by Verotica. Like he was like he approved the Death Deal of Story, the Death Deal of Art. He approved Bisley being on a book and stuff like that. Like this nuts. has got to be a biz piece, right? This is Bisley. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's definitely get, especially back then, he loved this green. He'd put that. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. I always green. liked that too. Like that puke green kind of. I always room. wondered what kind of paint he was using because it was always kind of like. It didn't look like it was straight out of the tube. Like what? Uh, like because it's so bright and it's almost garish, like uh, the way uh, Bisley chooses his colors. I I would I mean I don't know for for a fact, but like I said, like he was he was kind of out of the box when it came to shit like that. Like he would sometimes he would use gouache, sometimes he would use watercolor, but anything he used he bled. You know what I'm saying? Like even even oils, you can bleed. Like you just, you know, you just take a lot of solvent and you just let it bleed all over the canvas. Yeah, you know? and I, I so think that cool. was that was one of the techniques he used. Like if, you, well, where he had that check just now in the painting, like you can tell, like there's so many different colors mixed into that into that chick's body right there. Like it's not just yeah. flesh. Like he bled the flesh and then he bled some blue in there with some greens. And everything actually falls within color theory too. It's just like that's why it works, you know. And uh, like he's got like basically that whole illustration is red and green, but you don't see it as red and green because it's different. Like it's not straight red or straight green. You see what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. it's crazy, right? Um, yeah, great, great color theory. Yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah. I also have this, of course, picked this up a few years ago. This talks about fact two a lot. And there's an interview with uh, Bisley about it in here, as, as well as a bunch of, uh, you know, heavy metal comics. But this was something, before we get out of here, guys, um, that I wanted to show off. That I maybe mentioned a few times, but this was, in the 90s, you could buy this from, from shops. It was a four or three-pack books collection of Lobo stories, uh, all illustrated by Bisley. It's got this kick-ass, uh, you know, hardcover um, actually there's a story by me and dan jurgens in that i think really yeah pull them out i think there's uh the superman lobo fight in there if i'm not mistaken um i don't know when this came out so this lobo's greatest hits because i have that dc sent that to me and i think i worked on it other yeah this is not uh all this stuff this is uh this is when there it is right there that's it what art that's awesome that's sick so this is like more of the um keith giffen lobo like how he he looked with the legion of super or the legion not legion superheroes but when he was on legion yeah yeah that's awesome dude yeah Let's go back and read this so yeah it came out with lobo's greatest hits and this is a one of the stories in here is when lobo wait go back he's got him in a headlock and he's in this corner. Yeah, he's just pounding on his head. <laughs> Two I, panels. <laughs> I, yeah, I think the only reason um, Superman lost is, or like that Lobo lost is because he was really, really drunk. I think that's why, <laughs> I think that's why they said uh, Lobo lost the fight. Yeah, because I think Superman tricked him because Lobo was drunk. What year was this? It was... Uh, uh, Early 80s or late 80s, I guess. Wow. Probably maybe mid, mid, early 80s or late 80s, I should say. Let me say it again. Mid to late 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is before Bisley got his hands on Lobo and kind of redesigned him for that, that first miniseries in 91. 
Well, that's so cool that uh, you worked on this. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's Giffen. No, it, who is this? I don't know who this is. Is it Barry Kitson maybe? Another Brit, Barry Kitson. He, you know, Lobo <laughs> was doing stuff, you know, that you would equate to more of a Deadpool style, even before Deadpool was doing that. So one of the stories in, is he, in here is Lobo goes back in time to the first appearance of Lobo, where he's like in that purple and orange jumpsuit and he's ragging on, he's like, why was I wearing that shit, you know? And uh, <laughs> so he would break the fourth wall and stuff, especially, you know, the Keith, Keith Giffen stuff. So, I, yeah. um, it was, yeah. yeah, Lobo was always like brutal comedy. You know what I'm saying? Like it was never, yeah. you never really took it serious, but you always, like they never lost that bad ass them of Lobo, you know, like he never took shit from anybody, dude. And for some odd reason, they thought that that was bad. So they replaced him with the Twilight Lobo. <laughs> yeah. 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 The thing is, this is, this is what I love DC comics. I, I loved all my years working there. Um, but DC cannot maintain anything that they build. Like, like Lobo was huge, but I, I just don't think they ever really knew what to do with it. Um, yeah. And instead of just letting uh, Giffen and, uh, you know, uh, Simon Bisley and all those guys just run with it, I think they tried to kind of manage it. And I just don't think that that's, that's something that can be managed. Um, also, I do think that um, corporations don't like to admit that there's there's individual artists that actually uh, have a major, major uh, influence on the character or on the story. And, you know, when you think about Giffen and you think about Simon Bisley, that's Lobo. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. there are people that have done good stuff, but that is Lobo. I think so, somebody got to Giffen though, like because Giffen came out and said that he re regretted creating Lobo, like because people idolized an anti anti hero, and I was like, "What? It's <laughs> crazy." I don't, I don't think anybody took it like seriously, and and I also think like if if DC and these guys don't want those comparisons, don't bring them into the universe. You know what yeah. I mean? Everything doesn't have to belong in the DCU, so just have Lobo exist in his own universe. And and let people of a you know adult you know age pick yeah. up the books. That's that's all. You know, put your warning on it, and then just put it out. Yeah, and then just put it out. And exactly, it contains bad taste in the form of ultra violence, icon bashing, and the finger more offensive than Christmas is usually is. Yeah, see, and then they do it with humor. You know, they they have the disclaimer on there, but they did it with humor, which yeah. still fits the 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 motif of the book the 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 overall feel of the book um yeah i just i just think that sometimes these companies uh need to get out of the way and just let these guys create and as soon as they tried to kind of control lobo it just kind of it just kind of fell apart well well we have this and it could have still been this character which was what lobo looked like the first time he was around <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's the thing though. Like, I don't, I, I think the, the problem is, is that like money only goes so far with contr controlling a creator. Yeah. And I think these, I think corporations know that, you know, so they don't want, I think that's why they shift creators around so much and they don't want them to get too used to doing one character or get the fans too used to that creator doing one character, you know? And because that used to irritate the shit out of me. Like I'd, I'd be collecting a series like the Hulk, right? And Dale Cohen would be on the Hulk. And you can obviously tell Dale Cohen loved doing the Hulk. But then they would take Dale Cohen off the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. you know? And it was it was nuts, dude. Like it was like I, I never got that. I was like, if it's going to be successful and it's, this creator loves doing that character, let him do that character. You know, just I don't know. It just. Oh, that's crazy. Well, there are other people that that can, you know, draw and and achieve the sensibility. So it doesn't have to just be, you know, those people. But you have to you have to know what's working and then how to keep keep that going. And I just don't think that they really yeah. ever did. And I do think like trying to bring Lobo into the DC universe would always it's just by that nature it's going to sterilize the character i mean once you get to this level i should say 
you know, trying to bring him back into the, the DC universe is just going to be tough because the sensibility is completely different. Like yeah. if you brought, if you did a Superman book and you tried to bring Lobo in, which we did, it, it's, it's really tough because you can't really have Lobo be completely Lobo. Right. Yeah. Right. So this, this I, I think cool. maybe Lobo might've been one of the only characters that could actually like put, Superman to task too. You know what I'm saying? Like he did in that fight. Yeah. yeah. I thought that I thought Jurgens did a pretty good job with writing the story because he, he understood the character and um and within the confines of a Superman comic, I think he, he really made it work. But that's a one shot. I, I just think like you can't really have the character in that universe. I just don't think it works for me personally. I think, I think just by the nature of him being in the DC universe, you would have to water the character down. So, so check this out. Art, I don't know if you remember this, but this came with the box set as well. And it, it was only available with this. Box. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead and open it. <laughs> so it's got a cool, you know, kind of a double page uh, wraparound cover, the wisdom of Lobo. And you open it up and they're like, oh, it's a special, you know, special book no one else is going to have. And it's totally blank in here. All the pages <laughs> are blank. It's supposed to be like, oh, yeah, here's the intelligence of Lobo and it's blank pages. So, yeah, and then when you open it, there's absolutely nothing inside. <laughs> right. That seems like the perfect sketchbook to get people to go ahead and just do Lobo illustrations all the yeah. way through it. So I had gotten this probably a year before I met Bisley. And when I got to the convention, as you saw in that picture, I didn't know he was going to be there. I'm like, holy shit. So I was there on work because the arcade I worked for had a bunch of games there. So I was there free all weekend. So I went home, got all my Lobo shit, brought it to him. He signed the box. And I'm like, hey, can you sign the inside of this? Like, so the, the only thing that's going to be in here is your signature. And he's like, yeah, sure. And he took it. And for the next like three minutes, he uh, signed it and drew on every page. <laughs> oh, well, now I know why you. Now I know why you didn't open it up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's fucking delicious. <laughs> so he did all this stuff. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> In front of everybody, and he's just not saying anything, and everyone's cracking up. And he's just so cool, dude. Uh, it was awesome to see that. And he's like, yeah, don't, you know, just show your friends that. But it's been years. <laughs> like, hey, I got a YouTube channel. I'll show this off now. But, uh, it's really cool. Like that's the man. <laughs> There's the finger. That's awesome. So awesome. To like a skull and, and then the last <laughs> one he threw a little lobo there. Oh so, my gosh. How long did he take to go through the whole book? It was like uh five minutes maybe. Wow. So he was just flipping those pages, uh yeah, doodling those uh those little crazy doodles. That's awesome. So he's one of the coolest guys i'm you know comic artists i've met in person he is uh, actually him Morgan and arthur sweet like both of those guys were yeah you know, so. and then of course he did the uh awesome lost pages book and you guys could uh grab this book right now it's still in demand we ship it out next day and uh it's got the beautiful simon bisley cover we also have i think we have like two copies uh where simon signed the book as well left up there you still have signed Simon Bisley yeah. version? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. Yeah, get in there. Uh, back one of those. And and back it now because I don't think Simon Bisley is going to be alive that much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he is. That, that's a joke, man. I mean, with his lifestyle, I think that guy is just, he's going to live forever. He's going to be like, uh, what's it, Keith Richards, you know, just to yeah. the hell out of himself any chance he can and just, is going to outlive all of us. Yeah, I mean, it still looks like he's having a blast doing doing this stuff and, and painting all the time. And, I mean, that guy doesn't have to have another job for the rest of his life, you know. Uh, he's got a kick-ass Instagram page. His, I think his daughter uh, runs it. Um, and, yeah, check out uh, the Lost Pages. Check out Chrono Mechanics, everybody. Yes. This is and, still And, up. you guys, Chrono Mechanics is finished. We have the books. They're all printed up and ready to go. So if you back a book today, 
uh, the books will go out ASAP. Nice, man. That's awesome. And you're getting ready to uh, ramp up for your next book, right? Yeah, I have uh, I have some black and white artwork right here. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't show it. I can't show it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm surrounded with stuff right now, and I, I can't wait to get it. Uh, you know, get it up and running, get the campaign going for Black and White Volume 2. Awesome, man. Yeah, check out Chrono Mechanics. Um, like like Preston was saying, very much a different style than what we're used to from uh, the the Black and White series that, that Art's going to do. But I can't wait for the next Black and White as, as well. It's going to be so cool. And I know you have a lot planned for it, Art. Yeah, it's going to be kick ass. Yeah. It's going to be sick. Preston, and what then- do you Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask Preston what he was going to what he's working on. I'm uh, I'm just doing some pages, the um, <laughs> thumbnails. But uh, yeah, Doc Salem, <laughs> Doc Salem campaign still active. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking about shutting it down pretty soon. So shutting it down. Wants to get in on it. Um, Doc Salem. Um, Doc Salem. You're on the the new Six Gun Gorilla book as well that just launched. Yeah. Uh, Brian. Yeah. Cookdale. And then me and you were doing the uh, mailing, you know, thing. Yeah, Preston. I don't know if you heard this art, but uh, Malin hired me to write a graveyard shift story, and I suggested Preston do the art. So Preston got hired too. So we're working on a kick-ass Sweet. graveyard shift story. Yeah, that that's a great concept. You're gonna have a you're gonna have fun in that world. Yeah. For sure. Oh, it, it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. So knocking some of that stuff off uh, this week as well. And diving into that. Uh, and then also, guys, check out uh, Magic Cop 2. We are we have like 13 days left. I think we got some backers while we're on stream. Let's see. We're at 217. Do a little refresh. Uh, no, we're still at 217. All right. I guess not. Maybe. Oh, no. It reloaded while we were, <laughs> while we were uh, showing stuff off. But thanks for everyone who's back in this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Art. Art did an amazing um, sketch, head sketch for us. Thank you so much, Art. That was awesome. Hey, no problem. Thanks for letting me do it. Yeah, it was it was a pleasure. Look at that. Ooh, sexy. What the heck? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh yeah, these are my brother's uh, sketch cards. So. <laughs> But, you know, so, like on, on the Simon Bisley thing, like I, I like the opportunity to just kind of throw down some ink lines and, and wash. So that's that's why that card was a lot of fun to do, Phil. So uh, yeah. thanks for letting me do that. Yeah, no problem, man. No, it's uh, it was our pleasure. It's so cool to have everybody around CG and to hang out with like two streams like this. This was so fun. I'm glad you guys were able to come on. Uh, and oh, yeah. Kelsey. Screw Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah in, in the immortal words of uh of simon bisley yeah. <laughs> well hopefully he's alive and he's not uh face down in the swamp right now uh in louisiana which so. one kelsey or uh or <laughs> <Both of them. laughs> yeah. actually it turns out they're both hanging out together in the swamp <laughs> yeah drinking some moonshine out in the swamp like, yeah, the like they're, 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 shoot, they're shooting some gator, yeah. <laughs> the gator tastes fucking delicious. <laughs> I'll have to take your word for it. But I will say there is like um I, I still want to eat rattlesnake. Me too. Actually. I do I do want some gator. I have had uh shark and I there is something about eating a predator or eating something <laughs> that, that can kill you. And and I like that feeling, especially when it's cooked very very well. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had gator before; it's pretty good. I caught a rattlesnake. Well, I killed a rattlesnake, and I had uh, it was when I lived in California, and I uh, had some people over to do some work, and um, they were Hispanic gentlemen, yeah. and I had my grill right there, and they were like, uh, "Can we take the snake?" I mean, it was. It was a good size. And I was like, what What do you want it? And it's like, um, we'll eat it. And I'm like, there's real food. There's a supermarket right down the street. You don't have to eat a snake. And he goes, he goes, no, in my country. I go, but you're not in your country. And then and then they're finally like, 
we like it. We like the way it tastes. And I was like, here you go. Knock yourself out. That's cool. I just wanted to try it. Like, from what I heard, they, like, deep fry it sometimes. And you pick a rib off and just eat the rib, you know? And it's, uh, like, in Texas, I've been checked trying to find people in Texas that do it. Because, I mean, dude, Texas is full of rattlesnakes. (laughs) And they eat anything. So, yeah. Well, you guys have we well, you guys we have copper heads. I killed one in the yard the other day. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if they make good eating either. They're not they're not quite as meaty. I mean, the, the California rattlesnake they get pretty good size. Yeah, there's a place you, where you, you can, can order slice them right. up as like like uh, like sushi or like kebabs. Yeah. You can slice them up and just kind of uh, marinate them and barbecue them up. Yeah, there's a place in Biloxi. Like no, it was Florabama. That um, and it was the world of jerky, right? <laughs> you could get like python jerky, you know, um, and uh, and bear jerky, and all this kind of shit. Oh, God, my daughter crazy. would love that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind eating a bear. Those things scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Say, anything sure? that anything yeah. that can knock your head off just by doing that. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. And they're psychotic too, like. You know, some people think, oh, because I think we have teddy bears. Like, we have all this symbolism in our culture. Like, oh, yeah, the little little bears, you cuddle with them. No. Yeah, well, they – two things about bears. One, they don't kill you. They eat you while you're alive. <laughs> and two, uh, like they say to meat, you got to have that meat, like, well done because they're full of parasites. Yeah. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. So the jerky thing works out pretty good for a bear. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, I haven't tried it. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, there it goes. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Look at that. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. Anything else you want to plug before we uh, head on out of here? Nah, just just go back, Chrono Mechanics. It's perhaps the greatest comic book of all time. And I'm not just saying that because I'm working on it. I'm pretty sure you know Philip feels the same way, right, Philip? Of course. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, go back the book and it is, it is done. It's printed up and they will go out, uh, ASAP, a batch just went out yesterday. So, uh, if you ordered a chrono book, you should be getting it soon. Awesome. Yeah. Same, same with the lost pages. You could, I think we actually, that's what we got a background today. We got someone got the lost pages while we we're on, um, dead drop says Kelsey was up till 4am on Ethan's. I was also up till the end of that stream. So it's no excuse, Kelsey. I'll yeah. Yeah. No excuse. Uh, Kamara says, I wonder how killer aliens taste. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Great stream. Yeah. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll do this again sometime. Uh, it was cool hanging out. Always love hanging out with you guys and, uh, hail to the chat. Thanks for tuning in. Go yeah. back. Doc Salem. Go back. The new six gun gorilla, which Preston is doing art for Brian Criscow's awesome sequel. Um, all these books. The links are in the description below, and we will see you uh, later on throughout the week with uh, another stream, guys. See ya.